What's up guys? Great to see you all. Welcome back. I hope you're all having a fantastic week. For today's video, I thought that would be fun to do something a little bit different and share with you guys a little relic from my past. I'm going to be sharing with you guys today poetry that I wrote when I was 13 years old about Mario. I feel like giving you guys some backstory into this instead of just going straight into poetry is going to make this just a lot more immersive, a lot more enriching. Things are going to kind of make a little bit more sense. However, if you just want to hear the poetry, you can just go ahead and skip to this timestamp here. All good. Let's go. So give you guys some backstory on this. Uh, this was back when I was, of course, in eighth grade. And for my eighth grade English class, we had our poetry unit. So for that unit, basically every class, our teacher would teach us a new type of poem, whether it's like soliloquy, seriu, free verse, etc. And then she would have us write our own examples. And now sometimes she would give us prompts and other times we were allowed to write our poems about whatever the heck we wanted. So thing you have to know about 13 year old me, which you can probably guess already, is that I had a crazy obsession with Mario. Mario was like my main fandom, my main jam, the like fictional world that I lived in. Think about being a 13 year old nerd. Many people probably know how this goes. When you're 13, you haven't quite learned yet that there there's a time and a place to share your enthusiasm for a given series. And there are not super cringy ways of showing your passion and broadcasting the fact that you really like this series. When I was 13 years old and I was given this opportunity by my teacher to write poetry about whatever I wanted, I decided to write it about Mario. And when I say Mario, I don't mean the character, I mean the series. I wasn't writing poetry like, his eyes burned with the passion of a billion fire flowers. Although now I kind of wish that I had because that would have been kind of amazing. But anyway, I didn't have a weird crush on Mario. No, pretty sure I didn't. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be sharing that with you guys today. And uh, it's it's going to be a little uh, cringy walk down memory lane, but uh, I think it's going to be fun. We're going to start with our Claire Hughes. This is entitled Toad semicolon in Mario Kart. This was about the time when I had first discovered what a semicolon was, and I did not know actually how to use it. All right. Toad, he drives down the road on his Standard S bike, winning first place is what he'd like. This is truly inspirational. The bike in Mario Kart is actually, this is Mario Kart Wii by the way. The bike is actually called Standard Bike S for like Standard Bike Small. But when I was writing this in poetry class, I couldn't exactly remember what it was called, but I could have sworn it was called the Standard S bike. And then I looked it up later and discovered that that was wrong, but like I couldn't change it because it would have messed up the rhyme scheme. I remember this just like, devastated my 13 year old self. But uh, you know, it's creative license, right? It's creative license. Just be an original, right? Don't bow down to like what things are actually called and also don't bow down to how semicolons are actually supposed to be used because uh, you're that cool. I forgot to mention, not all of these are about Mario, some of them are about Sonic. This is our Seriu page and this is one of my few Sonic referencing poems. Uh, this one is called The Boy Looking at My Drawings. I can only imagine what it's gonna be about. A boy looks down at my drawing of Amy Rose in the library. Great. I mean, that truly deserved to be immortalized in the form of poetry, so uh, good job there. And of course, we have the actual drawing of Amy Rose. You can't see it because uh, I did not know how to brighten things in iPhoto at the time, so, but it's there. This one isn't directly about Mario Sonic, but it has references to the series in it. Um, this is called My Sketchbook, and so to demonstrate, I had sketched some uh, drawings specifically for this poetry page. We have some, we have Peach, we have Amy Rose, and uh, the thing about this poem is that I was so proud of it that I actually asked the teacher to read it out loud to my classmates because she asked at the end of the class if anybody wanted their work shared. And I was like, oh man, all the kids are gonna love this poem because it's super cool because it has references to Mario and Sonic and Avatar in it. So everyone's gonna be blown away by my poem. I'm not even exaggerating, like that was my thought process. I remember this day in school. So basically the point I'm getting at is I want you guys to imagine that this is being read aloud to a class of middle school students. This is called My Sketchbook, and the S in Sketchbook in the title is not capitalized, so um, already off to a brilliant start, okay. My sketchbook is the item that holds every day's new creative ideas. The glass in which I pour my creativities for others to see, in brackets, maybe. It is the visual diary for this visual person, filled with manga and chibi illustrations, sketches of my own characters and existing characters, semicolon, Amy Rose, Katara, Princess Peach, Princess Daisy, dot 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 dot. 
Four dot ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. Four dot ellipses were a thing as well because apparently I was too cool for just three dots and nobody, nobody brought this to my attention. They weren't like only use three dots. So anyway, so all of these poems also have four dot ellipses, just, just to add to this cringe fest. I carry my sketchbook around school along with my textbooks and binder. I put them on my desk and suddenly hands start reaching for my sketchbook and voices call, can I see it? Can I see your sketchbook? Can I? Can I? That was in all caps, so that's why I had to scream it at you. I stutter, ugh, um, okay, but I'll have to navigate through it for you. For my sketchbook is my diary, the item that holds every day's new creative ideas, the glass in which I pour my creativity for others to see, in brackets, maybe, filled with manga and chibi illustrations, sketches of my own characters and existing characters, Amy Rose, dot, 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 dot. Yes, you've heard this before. That is my sketchbook. That one actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So I didn't like embarrass myself too much in front of my classmates, but I definitely still did embarrass myself in front of my classmates because I remember actually, I remember my teacher reading this out loud. She was our substitute at the time actually. And she was reading this out and I thought she was like basking in my poetic genius and my super cool, subtle fandom references. Looking back from what I remember, she was definitely cringing when she had to read out like, Amy Rose, Katara, Princess Peach, Princess... Just like, this kid is such a dork, which I mean, she's not wrong. She is absolutely not wrong. We're gonna finish things off with this lovely, I think it's a free verse maybe, I can't, I can't remember, but this is a two page poem about Mario Kart Wii. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. And of course, I have it nicely decorated. We have Peach and Mario and uh, over here is DK and Mario and Luigi, you know, because uh, I needed the world to know how much I loved Mario Kart and Mario and Mario Kart Wii and everything. So anyway, uh, mm. let's get to it. This one is entitled Mario Kart Time with an exclamation mark. So I guess I've pronounced it Mario Kart Time. Here we go, guys, get ready. <laughs> I sit, we wheel in hand ready to go. One player, multiplayer, two players, three players, four players, Nintendo WFC, one player, two players, Mario Kart channel, semicolon, play online, one player. So here I'm illustrating all of the options that you have on the main menu of Mario Kart Wii and then showing the viewers, or not the viewers, showing the reader which one I'm choosing by using a semicolon, which I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to use a semicolon like that, but anyway. Connecting to Nintendo WFC, dot, 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 dot. Worldwide, regional friends, worldwide. Versus battle, versus character, peach, vehicle, wild wing, automatic, manual, automatic. Searching for opponents, dot, 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 dot. My opponents are chosen. I watch them race. They finish the race and I am placed in the next one. Vote random, vote. Cup, special cup. Course, rainbow road. I'm the first to cast my vote. Now to wait for the others. Two out of 12 votes cast. Five out of 12, seven out of 12, eight out of 12, 11 out of 12. Come on, come on. Those were with exclamation marks. So that's why I was, that added a little bit of zest there. 12 out of 12. Now to pick the course. I sit there waiting to see whose course is randomly selected. I wait, I wait. It stops on mine. All right, time for some rainbow road. <laughs> we are about to race three, Two, in brackets, start engine, or in this case, start pressing the two button. I am so glad I mentioned that, and the brackets are a really nice touch. Ooh, okay. One, go! Go again was in caps, so. Whenever you guys get the beast voice, you can guarantee that like, it was in caps. We blast off. Some players are left behind at the start, but then manage to start driving. Other players attempt to push me off the course, but I've done this course many, many times, and I stay on. Fifth, fourth, I advance place by place as the beginners are separated from the pros. In brackets again, because of the difficulty of the course. I'm glad that I catered this to people who had never played Rainbow Road, because obviously anybody who has played Rainbow Road knows how hard it is, but like, I'm just, I'm really glad that I illustrated that, because I, I don't want people thinking that Rainbow Road is an easy course. Gotta really add to the, like, you know, the intensity of this poem. Soon I am in second with a two-star player playing as Birdo in front of me and a vicious fellow gold wheeler playing as Waluigi on my tail. The two-star player stumbles and I get to first. This is getting intense, you guys. I take as many shortcuts as I know and get as many mystery blocks as I can, dropping items wherever the others will easily run into them and continuously throwing shells over my shoulder. This is really good Mario Kart strategy. I'm really glad that I'm sharing this. Uh, if you ever want to play Mario Kart, there's some there's some good tips in this poem, so. Yay! Cries Peach, semicolon, someone has run into one of my items. I am relieved, 
but also hopeful that I didn't slow that player down too much. I drive and drive, now with only one player on my tail. I hear Birdo buzz. It's the two-star player. Then I hear a loud beep. It's my radar telling me that Birdo has thrown a red shell towards me. I try throwing banana peel behind me to stop the shell, but my timing is off and the shell hits my car and flips me over. Oh! That's my amazing peach impression, you're welcome. I cry as Birdo buzzes triumphantly and zooms by. I recover and zoom after. It's final lap and we're close to the finish line. Everyone's far behind us. I need to do something to get ahead of Birdo. I swerve through a line of mystery blocks. The dice spins, choosing my item. Spinning, spinning. It stops on a mushroom. Perfect. I smack the plush shape button to use my item and glide forward. Whee! I cry as I get in front of Birdo, who looks at me with astonishment. Finish! I've won the race! Yay, I won! I call with triumph. That's not me. That's Peach. That's her voice line. Um, but I'm trying to illustrate here that I'm like, Peach and I are becoming one. So. I call with triumph as I wave and blow kisses to the viewers. I did it! Great Peach impression. A plus there. I mean... It could have been a lot worse. Uh, I find it incredible the amount of detail that I went into this. But like, what what really adds to this is the fact that I thought I was so undeniably cool for doing this. I remember thinking I was so cool and so like genius for writing a whole poem about playing Mario Kart. This really, this brings back a lot of memories, let's just say. But I think it's really important to specify that I'm not ashamed of this in any way and I'm I'm not embarrassed because like I think this is a really nice thing to look back on like it's funny to look back on it and like kind of cringe but it's also just kind of a nice I guess memory of my past I feel like a lot of you watching are probably 13 right now and I don't want this to scare you or anything because like it's important to clarify that like yeah I'm reacting to my old cringy poetry that I wrote when I was 13 but I don't regret doing any of it in fact I'm very happy that this exists because I wrote this because I wasn't afraid to be myself and I wasn't afraid to be as enthusiastic as I am about these things and I got bullied a lot in school. I like in middle school I got bullied on a daily basis and I got bullied in elementary school and high school and the point is I was given such a hard time for these interests like this didn't come without a cost right but it didn't deter me from feeling that it was okay to like these things and like these things on that kind of a level. And I think that's really important to remember. What it really comes down to is that middle school is a tough time. Like anybody in middle school right now, I feel you. It's a really hard time. Anyone who's been through middle school knows that it's a rough time. Everybody's kind of struggling. And the biggest feedback that I can give is to treat others with kindness wherever possible and understand that everybody's struggling during middle school because it's such an awkward time. And just remember that as long as you're having fun and you aren't hurting anybody, go for it. Like if you like anime a lot, like anime a lot. And if you like cartoons a lot, like it and don't be ashamed because these things make you happy and you liking them, you know, as long as you're respectful to other people, you're not hurting anybody and there's really no harm. Will you look back like I'm looking back and maybe cringe at like your younger antics? Maybe, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's nice because you can look back and know that you didn't kind of bow to peer pressure and you weren't made to be ashamed of what you like. You were proud to be yourself and you weren't afraid to be yourself and I think that's the big takeaway. Like, it was fun to read this and be like, wow, that was cringy. But like, at the same time, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind is that, you know, it's good to be yourself. And it gets a lot better. Like, I was given such a hard time when I was little for liking these things. And now I look and all of the friends that I have and this whole community that I'm in is based off of being this excited about nerdy things, right? All the friends that I have that I made through cosplay, like the whole reason I cosplay is because I'm like this and the whole reason why I have all the friends that I have is because I'm like this and like probably the whole reason most of you are subscribed is because I have these nerdy interests. It's really cool to think about that now and think about where I was when I was writing this and where I am now and the fact that I wasn't deterred from liking these things and letting these things make me happy and now I can be this excited about fictional media and you know it's it's cool people are cool with that and I can share this interest with other people and I'm getting like a little bit way too sentimental right now but like so I just I feel a certain amount of responsibility for any preteens watching who might be you know nervous um, about liking the things that they like uh, so anyway 
Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to say there. Love what you love and treat others with respect and I'll be great. Anyway, um, but yes, on that note, thank you guys so much for watching, hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it and I really appreciate all of your guys' support. It's been really wonderful and uh, I didn't expect any of it, so like, I thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys all next time. Um, until then, if you guys have any stories from your past like this, any cute, cringy tales from when you were a young nerd, please share them. I would love, love, love to hear about them. We can walk down memory lane together. Um, I try to get to everybody's comments, but I don't always get to reply or give hearts to everybody, but I do read everybody's comments and I do my best. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next week. But until then, panda faces, please be sure to take care and be yourself. Bye.